Hello everybody, it is Friday. Time for Facebook Friday. I have had a crazy week. I am glad we are at Friday. That BOGO sale is a wild ride over here. Thanks for everybody who shopped my BOGO sale this week. As you can see, it's almost all gone. I've got to pack up a few more things, waiting on a few more people. Um, but overall, it was a great success. So thank you everybody who shopped with me this week. So it's Friday and that means Facebook Live, Facebook Friday this week. I chose the super duper cute, adorable fireside trimmings, which I keep calling fireside tidings, but that's not it. Fireside trimmings, <laughs> um, stamp set and matching dies. It's so cute. Um, you guys are going to love it. So I've got three projects uh, with that to show you today, and I've got a bonus one for Monday as well. So um, before we start stamping, hi everybody. It's good to see you guys jumping on. Before we get started... I'm going to run through a couple of things and I'm going to try to get started quickly today because these projects are a little bit tedious and I don't want to take too much time. Let's see if I can get this open so I can see your comments. All right, good. All right, good. I can see you guys. All right, first thing I want to tell you to remind you, <clears throat> there's a starter kit special this month. When you buy the starter kit, it's $99. Um, you get, pick $125, anything you want. And this month, in addition to that $125 in product, you also get two stamp sets, Queen Anne's Lace and So Much Love, as well as two class kits of projects. So if you want to hold a class when you get your starter kit, you'll have, every, have everything you need to do to hold a class for eight people. It's pretty amazing. Um, I haven't figured out the added um, cost of, or you know, what you're getting for free. I haven't added that up, but I, it's pretty significant. Two stamp sets and quite a bit of uh, paper and, um, you know, consumables to make the cards. So if you are interested in this, make sure you look at today's PDF over at pinkfuckery.com. There's a link there at the bottom and it'll take you to my join page, which is just the starter kit page. Um, and if you're looking for that page, it's always at the top of my blog. You click the button that says join and you'll find it. Okay. All right. Second thing I want to remind you guys about is club create is closed for right now. You can't join my club create. We are maxed out. However, this month we are making, um, eight, no, 10, no, hello, five. <laughs> I have 10 here cause I have double, but we're making five projects using the autumn goodness stamp set. And I worked really hard to get the PDF out ahead of time um, so that you guys can have access to it if you weren't able to join Club Create but you want to see the tutorials. It includes a video showing you how to color the, the um, images as well as how to put your cards together. So that PDF is in my PDF store. Again, at the top of my blog, there's a button that says PDF store and uh, you can find it in there. You can also click on that link on today's PDF and it'll take you right there, okay? All right, so let's move that out of the way. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting something. I don't know. Suddenly I, for, I feel like I for, I'm forgetting something, but maybe not. The Halloween class. Are you guys ready for Halloween? Here it got really cool yesterday. Like when I went out for my morning walk, it was 57. I know you guys are laughing, but down here in South Texas, that is winter. <laughs> We were all walking around with a, you know, hop and a skip and our step. We were so excited. So I am full on holiday mode now. Um, Halloween is first up. So if you love Halloween 3D projects, here's my Halloween to go class this year. It features the, and I say it wrong every time, Hallow's Night Magic. What's, what is with me not being able to pronounce stamp sets? I don't know. I always forget the, I always forget the, um, the names of them. I call them the wrong thing. Anyhow six 3D projects. It's all 3Ds for Halloween. And um, the class to go, you can get it with the stamps and dies, without the stamps and dies, PDF only. Um, and then my downline gets a special uh, sweet stampede kit as well. You can find all the details on that as well on today's PDF at pinkbuckaroo.com. Um, it's also at the bottom of all of those posts. Uh, Louisa says, uh, 57 is winter in South Florida too. Yeah, what people up north don't understand is that we don't get super cold weather. So when we get in, you know, the cooler temperatures, it's a big deal for us. And for us, you know, we had six months of 
90s and hundreds non-stop with no break so when our body feels that 50 degree weather oh it feels so good so so good it just made me very happy today the sun is out let's see what's the temperature now it's pretty it's pretty warm now oh that's weird my watch is dead um <laughs> i don't know it's i think it's in the 80s already but it was nice this morning too all right, so Donna says, I was so excited to wear a long sleeve shirt. Donna, you're totally right. Donna lives here too in, in San Antonio with me. Uh, my daughter had ordered a sweater the week before and I was like, you're crazy. You will have like one day out of the whole year you can actually wear a sweater here. And then she was wearing it yesterday. She was so excited. So one never knows. I know 57 isn't sweater weather, but it is for us. All right, so how about some prizes? You guys, super funny. If you were not with me last week, I did three projects using the press on stamp set, the little coffee cups. And when I went to prepare for our projects, one of the stamps was missing. Isn't that how it is? I could not find it anywhere. And I was in the middle of getting all that BOGO stuff. It was like crazy chaos. I knew I'd seen it. I didn't know where it was. Um, so anyway, I was saying how it was like sad because then um, the stamp set would have, when I found the stamp, I had pulled out a stamp set that was supposed to be a prize and I used that stamp. So then that made that second stamp set used and I couldn't use it for a prize. But you guys were all like, yeah, you can. So guess what? I found the stamp, the missing stamp today. It was in my stamparatus. I pulled the stamparatus out, um, to use it for today and there sat the coffee cup. So I went back and looked to see who told me they wouldn't mind getting a stamp set as a prize with one used stamp in it. And Dawn Hutchins, you're getting the stamp set. So you can see it's all new except, except for that one. So Dawn, I'm glad you guys spoke up. I would be happy to give it to you as a prize, just as long as you know that it had that one used stamp in it. Anyhow, I was able to return my stamp to its correct place and uh, the one that we used one time can go to a new home. All right, so I have other prizes too because I had bundles to give away next last week. I've got three bundles. The first one is uh, Mountain Air. And if you haven't joined me before, I give prizes away to people who share the video on Facebook. So all you have to do is share it anywhere. Um, and then in the comments, let me know that you shared. Uh, Donna Bradford, you, congratulations. You're getting the Mountain Air. Air stamp set. I love this bundle. It's the dies and the stamp set. Donna, congratulations. I have your mailing address. Um, Angela Jensen, you are getting the stitched leaves bundle. Love of leaves. And I have your mailing address as well, Angela. And then last but not least, celebrate sunflowers, Annie Dorman. Congratulations. Now, Annie, I'm not sure if I have your mailing address, so please message me and let me know, okay? So I can get these out to you guys. Thank you so much for sharing the video. I do appreciate it. It does help me. Um, and I've got three prizes again this week. I've got two tag buffet stamp sets. You might not have noticed the stamp set. It's in the front of the holiday catalog with one of the kits, um, but it's a standalone stamp set and it's a pretty good one. Um, it's designed for that tag kit, but obviously you can use it for other things. So I've got two of those to give away next week and super cute have a hoop bundle. This is going to be a Facebook Friday soon. I love this set in October. I think probably the first week in October, I'm going to do this one. So this or one of these, you'll be entered into the drawing. Now all you have to do is share the video. Um, oh, I know I did not share the all-star tutorial bundle. You guys, I'm way behind ma mailing, emailing these out. If you have put an order with me since probably, what is today? I probably haven't sent them out at all. So I owe anybody who has spent $50 with me, including everybody who shopped the BOGO sale this week, I'm going to email this to you, okay? You get it for free. Um, in here are 12 tutorials featuring featuring the Playing With Patterns Suite. Uh, my project is a cute little, I actually did an outside the box project and made it a Halloween project, but it doesn't have to be Halloween. Um, so that's mine in here. They're all videos, all 12, and they're done by 12 different amazing Stampin' Up! demonstrators. So you get this for free with a $50 order from me. You can also get it in, the PD, in my PDF store for $15, okay? I'm gonna set that on my computer and that's gonna be the first thing I do this afternoon. All right, so 
we are ready. Facebook Friday, if you've never joined me, I pick a product, uh, usually a bundle or a stamp set, and I make three projects. I, sh I show you three different ways to use it. And this week we're doing fireside trimmings. Um, and the projects, um, you can get the projects, the make and takes that I'm gonna show you today. You can get the make and takes for free. Um, any order between now and Monday at midnight that uses the host code that's attached to Facebook Friday, you'll see it when I flip the camera down. Um, you, I will send these uh, make and takes to you for free. The order has to be a minimum $35 and it has to use the host code. Unless your order is over $150, don't use the host code because then you're getting stamp and rewards and I will still send them to you. And they look like this. I put them all together in a little kit and send them to you with a little thank you tag. You need the stamps and the dies that I'm featuring as well as ink and adhesive. Okay, so everything else will be there for you, just not stamped images or the dies if I'm featuring a die. Like today, if you get this make and take kit, you'll need these dies for sure. I won't cut these shapes for you. You'll have to do those. But like if I was using a circle, I would send you the circle. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, so you have Monday till Monday at midnight. Okay, Whew. that was a lot. We are ready. Um, let me get situated here. I'm gonna switch my camera down over here so you guys can see what we're doing. Hold on just a second. Uh, so if you go to pinkbuckaroo.com, you'll see today's post pop up. Um, I will also add the direct link to today's video. When I'm done, I go edit and add, a, add all the important links and things for you. Um, you will see all the all three projects that we're using. And under the last project, which is this one, there will be a, P, a leak, link to a PDF. And the PDF, it looks like this. And it will have all the products that I'm using. I'm use, I, there was a lot of products this week and it's mostly cardstock and ink because there's lots of little pieces um, and any of the measurements that, that you need, okay? So make sure you hop over there. And all of those things that I just told you about, all the links are right there. The host code is there if you need it. And I believe that is it. All right, let's get started. Let me move this so I can see you guys. Um, oh, Kathy, is this the one that you won for me? Oh, it's so fun. It is so, so cute. And I was going to pull out the catalog to show you guys. Um, I was again, intimidated by it. I'm always intimidated by the stamp sets that I love so much, you know, because I'm worried that I'm going to play with it and then it, I'm not going to do it justice, you know, cause it's so cute. Um, but I loved it. I, one thing that I do when I'm feeling a little, you know, like I can't think of an idea or I don't know where to get started. I case the catalog and that's what I did here first. This project in the back, 73, I love that right there. And I had, was having a hard time seeing it. You know, you, when you look at something and you want to zoom in, <laughs> I went online, I pulled up the picture, I, even the picture online, I couldn't see well, but I ended up making a card out of it. And it's so, so cute. Lots of watercoloring and embossing on this one. Um, I'm going to feature this on Monday. You'll be able to see it close up on Monday on my blog. Um, but that's a fun one, a little Halloween one. But let's see what's, it's on page 20. Is that right? Page 20. So if you look over here, it's a really big set. It has a lot of pieces, a lot of little pieces. Um, and the dies have a lot of pieces too. So 25 dies and 18 stamps. And oh, I love that sample too, that's really cute. So we're gonna make two cards. We're gonna make a Christmas card and then kind of a fall card. And then we're gonna use this to not make a fireplace card. We're gonna make a 3D project and use um, the stamps and the dies for the tag. So um, don't always feel like you're you know, pegged into exactly doing, you know, a, a fireplace every time. You don't have to. There's a lot of little cute things here that you can use um, without the fireplace. All right, so let's get started. I thought we would start with Christmas, of course, because I feel like at this point, this, you know, like our minds are starting to go towards Christmas, right? At least mine does. I'm not ready. I'm not ready for Christmas. But I'm starting to kind of think, you know, that, that Christmas to-do list that creeps up. 
I'm starting to, you know, think about it. And we all like to make Christmas cards. So I thought, you know, let's start, let's start playing around with that. All right, we're gonna make the little scene first. And we're gonna use a, a lot of stamps and a lot of dies, but I wanna show you a technique that I'm gonna show you. This has this little reindeer here, but I wanted the reindeer on either side of the fireplace. So I'm gonna show you how I stamped, I did reverse stamping. Um, so that I had one facing the left and one facing the right, okay? All right, so I have done some things ahead of time just for um, sanity's sake so that we're not here for three hours. Um, so I have already embossed the white piece with that brick wall embossing folder, right? It's like the obvious choice. The brick wall and the wood slat is like the perfect background for the fireplace. So I have that whisper white piece embossed with the brick wall. I've cut out a shaded spruce um, swag what's the word I'm looking for? You know, swag, I guess that's the word I'm looking for. And then the silver stars. I love this. I can see using this die on a lot of things um, in the future. Now we're going to do, we're going to do some other die cutting. We're going to do the flames. Look at these dies. Those look like teeth to me. <laughs> You know, if you if your child has lost a tooth, that's what that looks like to me. We're going to do two of them in Pumpkin Pie and one of them in Mango Melody. We are going to stamp the... Where'd my ink go? We're going to stamp the logs for the fireplace in Early Espresso. Okay. Then we're going to stamp the fireplace. I'm going to move all of these up here. We're gonna stamp that cute little fireplace in soft suede. Again, my inks are all messy because I'm using them in several places today. Here it is. Just soft suede, garland. Thank you, Lori and Chris, thank you. You know, I don't have a hard time with words until I'm live on Facebook. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, something happens in my brain and I'm stuttering and, you know, sputtering. All right, there's our fireplace. Um, what else do we need? We need to do the little Christmas trees. So we'll do them in Memento also. Now I'm going to stamp the reindeer once normal right here. Okay. And then we will do our reverse stamping. And we're going to get out that Stamparatus. Yes, I'm sure many of you, when you looked at that photo of my Stamparatus, were like, gross, it's filthy. Yeah, it is. You're right. I'd rather spend my time stamping than spending my time cleaning. <laughs> so yeah, it's dirty. Who cares? Okay, now I'm going to take my reindeer stamp. I have my Stamparatus and my silicone sheet. Do you see the cup? I did reverse stamping with the cup. That's why it was still in here. I don't know why I didn't think about that. Um, okay, I'm going to take the reindeer and I'm going to set it down. Let me make sure that's dry. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to set it down right there and I'm going to pick it up and then I'm going to take my memento, ink it up and I'm going to stamp it right on the silicone sheet. And then I'm going to quickly lay down my whisper white piece. Okay. So it's going to pick that image up before I pick my whisper white piece up. Put my magnets down. I'm going to stamp it again because now I'm going to use the image on the other side, but because I've stamped it also on this side, I'm going to be able to take my die and cut it out. Right? Does that make sense? It's very, it's very smart. I don't know who ever invented that, but it's very smart technique. Okay. Now let's color these guys. Oh my gosh. I thought something was crawling across my foot. It was just a rubber band that freaked me out. Okay, so we're gonna do, see how we have the reindeer on this side and a reindeer on this side. So I'm gonna take my crumb cake dark and I'm gonna color in. Now you guys, I don't know if you saw my post, but Charlie, you guys all know Charlie, my schnauzer, I have three schnauzers. He's the one who's the grouchy old man. He you know, he lives for like 
attack mode and, and not that he's an attack dog he just thinks he is and he likes to bark at every movement and everything that happens so our our house backs up to a green belt we have a wrought iron fence so you can see into the green belt but we have because we have the rabbit that is free range in the backyard we took mesh not chicken wire but like chicken wire you know but it's it's um the, the holes are smaller years ago and we went all around the backyard so that the rabbit couldn't get out so um i'm reading what did my mom say you lose words as you get older and someone has a birthday in a few weeks making you even older i'm not sure who you're talking about being old mom because if i'm old what does that say about you i guess that's what you're saying huh mm-hmm I know. <laughs> yes, time does go by fast. All right, I'm gonna sh I'm gonna color this these trees in light shaded spruce, and then I'm gonna add in the dark as I am coloring. I'm gonna finish telling you this story. Um, so we have critters in the green belt, right? The Charlie Mr. Attack dog is constantly barking at things back there. I know they're skunks. We've smelled them. People in our yard, in our neighborhood, dogs have gotten skunked. The neighbor recently told my husband that there was a skunk living under their deck, but I wasn't overly concerned because again, if the rabbit can't get out, how can anything get in? Well, apparently it can. My husband left super early on Tuesday morning to go on a business trip to Minneapolis and I got up at six and they all went out, all three dogs came out, and only Mac came back in, and Mac is our other old guy, but he's real sweet, and he's barking at me at like 6.15 in the morning. And then as soon as I looked up and realized he was barking at me, I smelled the skunk. I It was very dark in the backyard, but I looked out, and Charlie is rubbing his body on the grass like this, you know, going back and forth and back and forth. But then he's like running around the shed like crazy. But then he's, and I can smell that we have been scuffed. Of course. So Pepper the puppy is out there too, trying to get in, in Charlie's business. You know, she's very excited. Um, Mac didn't want to have anything to do with it, but Charlie definitely had gotten skunked. And so we, I called my, my middle daughter. She came running down the stairs to help me. And I don't know if you guys have ever had a dog that has gotten skunked. This is our first time. <laughs> but man, Charlie still stinks three days later. And I had washed and washed and washed. Now, he did get skunked again in the afternoon because the skunk was under the shed. He squeezed apparently through a, like a crack like this big in the corner of the fence, which the rabbit's way too fat for. So <sighs> it was... It was a very stressful day. Why do those things only happen when your husband's out of town? <laughs> I, I mean, you know, ah, so it was a crazy week and I still can smell the skunk. I can smell it in my house. It's very gross. Ugh. So that on top of everything crazy going on this week, it was a crazy week. Okay, so I have something new. I have a cut and emboss machine. This is new, you guys. You've seen me using it for a month now. It's now available for you guys to order. Judy, uh, somebody told me tomato juice, but all the neighbors have been talking and saying it doesn't work and that I had already bought this skunk shampoo that everybody recommended and it's not working. I mean, I, I don't think it's working. So I think I'm ready to try tomato juice. Somebody else told me there was like a baking soda peroxide mix. I, I just think he's going to need to stay outside until he stops stinking. <laughs> Just kidding, he won't do that. Okay, anyway, back to this. This is the new magnetic, and I'm calling it the platform, but it's not. It's a magnetic plate. It's different than our other one. Um, let me see, I have the old one here. You know the old one that we had? There were little magnets in here, and you can even see them, the little circles. And over time, what I think happened is that they would flip or something, and you know your dyes would jump around, and it was kind of frustrating. Well, this one is much different. As you can see, it's thinner, first of all, and it's a sheet. It's a magnetic, it's a, the whole sheet is magnetic, so that's not going to be a problem. Now, I used it for the first time um, yesterday, and it kind of freaked me out because it's leaving these cut marks. So I went online, and that's how it's supposed to. It's a self-healing mat here, so that's okay if you get these cut marks in the magnetic plate, okay? Just FYI. 
All right, so let's load all these up. I'm gonna cut this down a little bit. Boy, you guys all seems like y'all have, I, I must be the last person to have been skunked. I'm really actually surprised that we haven't been skunked sooner because of the dogs, but the poor skunk was trapped in the yard. I sprayed him, I sprayed, he was under the, the shed and I got our hose and I sprayed it real hard and he came out the backside. <laughs> it scared me half to death, um, scared my daughter. But, and then that's when Charlie got skunked again because he was under the shed again with a stupid skunk. <sighs> and then today, he a, a dove flew into our window and it was injured. He immediately had it and was trying to bring it in the house. I'm like, Charlie, you're killing me. You, you, you got We couldn't get it out of his mouth. He's just, he's just been naughty. Maybe he was mad that daddy went out of town. I'm not sure. All right, I'm going to layer as many of these things up as I can. I'm going to come back in a little while. I'm going to read all of your skunk suggestions because I bathed him again this morning and he still stinks. So that shampoo, okay, I got it all layered. Um, that shampoo that was the most highly recommended from the neighbors, it did not work. Carla, entertaining is not the word. I mean, actually, okay. Yeah, it was entertaining. But man, it was not what I wanted to be dealing with. It scared me half to death. I saw, that, I saw that skunk come out under the shed and he kind of turned towards me, even though it was the other side of the yard. He turned towards me because he was going to go back under the shed. <laughs> I yelped and ran back at the house. My daughter ran. The hose was flying around. It was just, I mean, if you had been like a fly on the wall, it probably was hilarious. But for us, it was not hilarious. And now he just stinks. Remind me, why do we have dogs? My mom and I always say that. Why do we have pets? Why do we do this to ourselves? All right, now, remember the um, reindeer that we did backwards, right? So you can tell it's backwards because the dye doesn't match. I'm gonna turn it over. This is when I laid it back down and stamped again on it. I can see where the dye needs to go, okay? Dawn dish soap, Shelly, I saw uh, that suggested online too. Dawn dish soap does a lot of things, doesn't it? Dawn dish soap is like the, the MacGyver soap of, I don't know, it does everything. All right, look, cut out perfectly. Well, I think it's my husband's turn. He's home now, and I think it's his turn. Don't you guys? I think it's his turn to bathe Charlie, because Charlie and I have taken a shower together. Five times now, five times, and I'm done. I'm done. <sighs> and you know what? If that skunk came back in the yard, he'd be all over it again. He'll never learn his lesson. My husband's parents live out in the country, and they have two, like, cattle dogs. I can't remember what they are, what kind they are, but they go after porcupines, and they have had to take them to the vet for the porcupine, you know, the where it's like full in their face, something like 27 times. The dogs don't learn their lesson. I don't get it. I don't get it. Okay, I'm going to put the, the fireplace here with dimensionals. I'm going to take my little bricks, my bricks, my logs, um, and I'm going to turn everything over. Now, I lost the cap today on my Tombow. Let's see if it's going to work. I don't know where it went. I'm going to put just a little bit there. And I'm going to lay these. My nails are getting too long. I can't pick anything up. I'm going to lay these down like that. The two orange. The two teeth. <laughs> right? I mean, doesn't that look like a tooth that came out? I know that's probably gross. But that's what it looks like to me. Maybe that could be a Halloween project. All right, so that's, I'm just gonna leave that right there. Now let's put some mini dimensionals on our cute little reindeer. You know, Chris, I wondered about that. And I actually had to take the puppy to the vet yesterday. She got skunked too. I don't think she actually got sprayed, but she was under the shed and just kind of chasing Charlie around. So she stunk real bad, but. I was a, the smell mostly came off of her, but when I took her to the vet yesterday, um, for something unrelated, I thought, I wonder if they can smell that on her. 
<laughs> they didn't say anything about it, but, and then I wondered, does the vet, does the vet do skunk removal? But I bet you're right, but it's the groomers that would do it. And I bet they would charge an arm and a leg for that, wouldn't they? Because of course they would. All right, so I'm gonna put those silver foil stars, and now we're gonna do our garland, our swag garland. And this one just goes straight across. This little set reminds me of my dollhouse. Do you, do you guys have a dollhouse when you were a kid? You know how you would decorate with little things? That's what this reminds me of. Okay, now my fingers are sticky. That's what this reminds me of, kind of decorating a little dollhouse with all these cute, or maybe your Barbie house. <laughs> all the cute little things. And if you like that, you will like this set because really you can make this, you know, a Christmas fireplace. You can make it a fall fireplace, which we'll do next. You could do just a decorative, you know, non-seasonal non fireplace. It's really cute. Oh, Lois, you had a skunk family under your shed. You read they don't like mothballs, a box under her shed. <laughs> really, that's interesting. She put a box, dumped a box of mothballs under her shed interesting well he didn't like the hose either i turned it on full blast and there's a little hole at the front of the shed and i psh, sprayed him out he was not a fan of that too bad mr skunk okay now i told you this is oh wait 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 i forgot let's do this these little um we got to put holly on our on our um why can't I remember this name? The garland. Good grief. The garland. There we go. Little red rhinestones. So cute. Now, this is a this is a fancy fold, a fun fold, whatever you want to call it. The measurements for these pieces are on the PDF. Okay. So here's my basically like what it was a card front. I cut off so that this is two inches. And then I cut a smaller card like this that's going to go in here like that. Okay. So on the end side, we're gonna put the wood grain card, um, wood grain designer series paper from In Good Taste from the annual catalog. I'm gonna put that right there. And then, there we go. We're gonna lay this card and it seems like it's backwards, but it's not, because the it's gonna go like that. So we've got a crease here and a crease here. I've got a whisper white piece to put on the inside and we'll stamp the sentiment in whatever color you have near we'll do soft suede sending Christmas cheer and it's a smaller area so you don't have to write as much that's always a good thing <laughs> I hate writing stuff when I have when I have to write a card ugh, can never think of what to write so I like when it's a small space all right we'll put that there now how cute those guys are now I've got two pieces of DSP we used this last week and I don't want to tell you the wrong name so let me look at my notes this is the tis the season designer series paper I think I'm gonna put I think I'm gonna do this different than the other one because this color I think this this paper pack has red and cherry cobbler in it together and so yeah, see, that is cherry color. Okay, it has, I know it has red too. Um, so be careful with that because it might clash a little bit. But we'll do that like that and that like that. And boom, done. Fun, right? And you know, these stars, you could do several layers of those. I don't know, I just think that's so fun. Like a little dollhouse. All right, do you guys like this stamp set? It's so cute. Um, Patricia says mothballs can be lethal with dogs. That's interesting, Patricia. Surely a dog wouldn't eat a mothball. Well, but you never know. But you're right. Who knows? My dogs are dumb enough. They probably would. All right. We are ready for the next project. Thank you for all the hearts. I appreciate that. All right. Let me clear all this out. And the next card is my favorite. I think you guys are going to like it too. Let me move all of this. Where did my little... My tray disappeared. Is it right here? Yeah, right here. All right. Now, I do have clean recordings, you guys, by the way. If you're distracted by my chit-chat, there are clean recordings without the chit-chat already up on YouTube. Um, they'll be linked on today's blog post. 
All right, so when I was working with this set, I did a little search on Pinterest. All I did was I typed fireplace, fall fireplace, winter fireplace, and I found this, and it's gorgeous. It's from like a home decorating blog, but I loved how she did a fall. She's got pumpkins, like natural pumpkins here, and it's all neutrals. So, and look, a shiplap background. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a gray granite shiplap background. Then the wood, which is again from In Good Taste, um, designer series paper, a white fireplace. And then pumpkins that are wood grain, and very vanilla and crumb cake. And then I threw in some of our metallics, our brushed metallic cardstock, okay? So that's where I got the inspiration. So, you know, sometimes we go to look for a specific card using a specific stamp set, but you don't always have to do that. You can type in kind of a theme of what you wanna do, and sometimes you'll find pictures. I've told you guys before, cakes and cookies are very inspirational too. So, I mean, I don't know if you'd find fireplace cookies, but if you were doing, you know, pumpkins, you could type in pumpkin, uh, cookies and find cute things. So sometimes you got to think outside of the box. Now this card has a bunch of little pieces. Okay. So again, keep in mind, this is like, this is like a little dollhouse. We're going to just have all these cute little pieces and we're going to do, we're going to stamp. Let me see. I need that over here. We're going to stamp the pumpkins two times on the wood, on the crumb cake, and on the vanilla. We've got brush metallic for the vases and candlesticks. We've got early espresso for the inside of the fireplace. See that, that rectangle right there is for the inside of the fireplace. So I'm gonna move that one over, we've got that. The mirror, this is my favorite die in this set. Um, these little like, I guess it's for a mirror or a label. Um, that's what we're gonna use it for. This one makes the frame, so we're gonna do that in the copper brushed metallic, and then the inside of the mirror, of course, is silver foil, okay? Oh, Natalie, good, I'm glad you liked it. Like it, thank you. Um, let me see, and the fireplace, okay. So, now, you guys are gonna think this is gonna take forever, but don't worry, I've done a lot of this ahead of time, but I do wanna show you the process, okay? Let me get, we're gonna use gold embossing powder, and white embossing powder. So over here on our, let's do the pumpkins first because that's the easiest. With crumb cake ink, I'm gonna stamp the three pumpkins twice on very vanilla, twice on crumb cake, and twice on the wood grain. You're not gonna use all of those pumpkins, but we're gonna kind of cut and piece them together, okay? Um, you wanna have a lot of things to decorate your fireplace. Now on our two, and I don't know what the colors of these are in the brush metallic. They both look gold to me. I don't think they are both gold, but anyway, the two lighter ones. And I'm gonna stamp, these are the candlesticks. Okay, you could use them either way, or they could be a little vase. I'm gonna stamp them twice on both gold pieces, okay? Then, this is Versamark ink. I'm also gonna do the vase. I know you can't see it. You'll see it in a minute. The vase twice as well. And then, I'm gonna grab my gold embossing powder and sprinkle that on. And now, you should be able to see. All right, get all that stray powder out of here. All right, so there's that one, and there's this one. All right, so we've got those. We'll cut those out, and then let's do our fireplace. And I'm doing, I'm using both Whisper White and Very Vanilla here. I know a lot of times people think, oh, do not mix those two, but here it works, because we're kind of doing a whole neutral palette. Oh, Brandy, you're trying to buy the set. Why would you do that to yourself? You need this set. It's very cute. Even if you don't, I'm, I know I've said it several times, but even if you don't use a fireplace, all the other cute, the other little things are cute. You, you know, if you stamped the little reindeer and punched it out with a circle and put it on a treat or something, on a treat container, it's, they're just really cute and easy to color. All right, so again, Versmark on Whisper White, and I'm gonna emboss that with 
white embossing powder. Oh, Carla, you're right. I bet it is brass, brass and gold. Yep, I bet you're right. I have actually looked to see what they are several times and I just can't seem to remember. Okay, now we've got all of these and we're gonna need the dies to match all of them. There's quite a few, so we need, oh, you know what? Let's heat this up before we do anything. Your heat tool, you wanna turn it on and especially with your white, be careful because you can scorch your paper. So move your heat tool around. You'll see your embossing powder turn kind of liquidy and shiny. That's how you know you've hit the right temperature. It will be very obvious when it changes. This card is quite a few steps, but I think it would be, you know, special. I wouldn't want to make a hundred of them. That's for sure, but a few. And you know, when you cut all these out, you'll have a few of these little pieces left too. You won't use all of them. All right, there we go. Now you're also gonna to want to heat these, but I'm not gonna do it the whole way because I, see how that turns so liquidy so fast? Because I've already actually done this ahead of time and cut them out, okay? All right, now you're gonna need the fireplace, right, for that. You're gonna need the pumpkins for all six sets of pumpkins. You're gonna need these dies right here to go with that, and this die to go with that. Now, like I said, we've already done that, so we're not gonna do that. Um, I've done it ahead of time. I've also done the pumpkins ahead of time. Um, but we do wanna use this little weird die. This is gonna be just branches, and I'm not stamping it, I'm just cutting it from the crumb cake, okay? All right, let's bring the machine back over here. Jennifer, that means I'm doing my job. That's awesome. Yeah, this is one of those sleeper sets, I think, for sure, in the um, catalog. I like a little, I like sets that are just whimsical and kind of create a scene. We've had sets like this in the past. Um, we've, had a, we've had a fireplace before, but it wasn't nearly as cute as this one. Um, what else? A door, we had a front door with like, the topiary and uh, things that you could put outside the front door. It was really cute. Okay, let's get all these cut. I'm gonna run it through one more time to get another sprig. Did I cut the sprigs out already? Oh, I did already, so I don't need to do that. <laughs> Y'all are funny. Sometimes, you know, sometimes we see a set in the catalog and, and all we can see is what they show us in the catalog. And that, those samples or colors or whatever may not appeal to us. And then when we see somebody else use it differently, it can change our minds. I mean, that, that happens to me too. I especially have a hard time um, kind of breaking out from if I see it used with a specific designer series paper. I have a hard time then thinking of using it any other way. Okay, let me make sure. Now you guys know, <laughs> I don't know, my friend Sue is on here, but this is dangerous. You'll lose these dies, so make sure you get them on here nice and neat. You guys always ask me about my magnet cards. These are from Stamp and, Stamp and Store. Stamp, is that what it's called, Stamp and Storage? Um, these cards, but you can use, you can get magnetic cards at Home Depot. You can get them all over the place, Amazon. Okay, there, now they're all there. Okay, now. Look, I have them all cut out already. So you guys, because it, it would have taken me a while to do that. And I didn't want you to have to sit here and watch me do that. All right, so we've got all these. This reminds me of the communion cup at church. I don't know if you guys do communion at your church like that, but that's what that reminds me of. Um, but it's a vase or a candle holder. There are little, there's a little candle stamp too and candle dies. All right, so we've got all these pieces now we can decorate. But before we do that, let's get our card base together. I've got a Whisper White thick card base and I've got embossing powder everywhere. Now to make that shiplap background, whoops, I'm just gonna make that with my Simply Scored. 
get it off the floor. Four by five and a fourth, and I'm just gonna score it every half inch. I'm channeling my inner Joanna Gaines with a shiplap, paper shiplap. All right. Now, I'm gonna take my adhesive and we're just gonna start here from the bottom up. This is the Whisper White card base, gray granite. We're gonna put a strip of um, DSP. Um, Lisa, any idea who those um, embossing powder? Yes, and I have seen them at Target too. Who are they made by? I don't know, I, I get them at, I've seen them at Target and TG Maxx. Let's see, oh, oh my gosh, that one's open. That almost was a disaster. This one's a little bit different. Oh, this one says Snap Lock. This one doesn't say anything. Oh, I don't know. Okay, now let's decorate. Let me get my dimensionals. Start with our white fireplace. I like that white fireplace. Um, the link for the projects takes you to the inspiration page, not the projects, Nancy. The one under the last photo doesn't take you to the PDF. Okay, I'll fix that. All right, let's see. Let's put our mirror together. Silver foil on the bottom and our brushed metallic frame on the top. Dollar Tree has them, Kathy says. The little containers. I've never seen them at Dollar Tree. That's good to know. Because I don't think they were a dollar. I think they were more than a dollar when I got them. Okay, come on. Tombo is not my friend today. Look, it's being very difficult. I'm going to set that right there so it'll dry. Okay, now we're just going to decorate. I'm going to start with one of the vases and I'm gonna do it a little bit high like it's floating, okay? Like it's not touching the ground because I need it to be higher than the others. You know, we wanna have different layers. And then I'm gonna do one with a dimensional and it can go skinny up or skinny down. And then we'll do one of the communion cups. I mean, <laughs> candlestick holders. We'll put that there. And I'm going to take my little branches and I'm going to stick that in there. You know, kind of like a dried, those dried naturals that you can get at the craft store. Those little branches. Stick that one in there. Okay, now over here we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put this one up high, and then we'll put, hmm, <laughs> I'm trying to decide. Okay, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to put that one there. I mean, there's no right or wrong, right? All right, now let's get our pumpkins. What I decided to do with my pumpkins is to cut them apart so that each little cluster would have, um, you know, three different pumpkins in it. So I'm just gonna cut like the middle one out. I'm gonna put on that one. And then this fat one, I'm gonna put over here. And then how many do I need? What did I use? I just did three or two sets of three. So then we need a crumb cake we need a little crumb cake one here. Oh, this glue is a mess. I need to get a new one. Okay. Oh, come on. There we go. I think if you have um, a child who likes to stamp, this would be a fun set for them as well. Um, as long as they have good fine motor skills because it is a little bit, you know, tedious, but it's fun. All right, now we'll do this one and that one. We'll put the white pumpkin on the end. I love white pumpkins. I always get those at the pumpkin patch. 
I like the funky pumpkins, the ones that have bumps, the weird ones, I like those. Okay, so now we've got two sets of three different kinds of pumpkins. Paper pieced it together. I'm gonna put one set here in the fireplace. Oh, come on. I'm gonna, first I'm gonna put that early espresso square or rectangle, whatever that is there. And then we will get one of our clusters of pumpkins and put that right there. And then we'll get our other cluster of pumpkins. Oh, come on. And I should let the stuff sit and dry, but we don't have time for that. We're gonna put that there. And how cute, so cute. You could even take one of these pumpkins too and put down here, one down there. And we've got, look, we've got all these candle things that we could put down for more height or whatever. Okay, now the mirror. The mirror is so beautiful. Let's put that on with dimensionals. And then all we have left is the sentiment. See, that'll go right there. And it's off-centered. It's meant to be off-centered. Like that. Fun, right? Totally different. I loved it when I, as soon as I saw that fireplace, I was like, yes, that is cool. All right, let's stamp the sentiment. I wanted to do soft suede. Ah, oh, here's my soft suede. We will do soft suede. This one, the sentiment says, from our home to yours. And I'm just gonna stamp it right on the edge of my crumb cake. And do, 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 where did my trimmer, it was here earlier. Where did I put it? Is it over here? No. Oh, Erica, why can't you keep your things where they need to be? Ah, here it is. It was, it was near. It was just under the paper. All right, let's trim that down. The words are just gonna be on a little sliver of crumb cake cardstock. And I think it's wide enough to use many dimensionals. Ooh, pumpkin bread, yum. I made soup last night for the first time in many months. It was delicious. Soup just tastes good on those first cool days. There we go. From our home to yours. That probably needs to be straightened out, but we're gonna leave it. All right, look, three different mantles, similar, but not exactly the same. Isn't that a fun card? From our home to yours, that could be anything, right? That could be welcome to the neighborhood. That could be here's some pumpkin bread, right, Lois? <laughs> It could be anything. All right, now, and you could also use this card any time of the year. Well, I guess it does have pumpkins, but if you took the pumpkins off, couldn't you use this card any time of the year? I think so. Thanks, you guys. That's so sweet. Thank you, Kathy. Somebody else said, who was that? Well, it went by too fast. Thank you for the sweet words, you guys. Very sweet. Ah, Patricia, thanks. Okay, one more. One more project. This one is not a card. This one is a 3D project featuring some of that delicious candy that I bought. And here it is, right here. It's a little, just a little box. It has a belly band on it. And inside, it fits three of these Dove pumpkins. But as you see, all I have left are three. <laughs> it fits four. Did I say three? It fits four. Um, I won't tell you where the other the others in the bag went. I'm not sure what happened to them. Uh, not that I would have eaten all of them. Surely it wasn't me. Have you guys seen these? I think I got them at Target. It may have been CVS or Walgreens, but they're everywhere. Dove chocolate pumpkins. I made the box so that it would fit four of these guys perfectly. So what I would suggest is that you don't go buy the candy until your boxes are ready to be made and to be sent out of the house. Because that candy is very delicious. Very, very delicious. All right, let's make, I mean, I can't resist Dove chocolate. I cannot, that, that means I cannot have it in my house. Zero self-control. Leah, you saw them at Target? Yeah, they're so good. Oh good, you got some. So 
yeah, so you could do this in different colors. Of course, they are pumpkins, but don't they have Dove chocolate this size all year round? And just, you know, like the blue wrapper, I think they're the same size. So this box would fit four Dove chocolates any time of the year. You could change the color, the theme, all of that. Okay, so let me look at my notes so I can tell you the right measurements. Um, I'll go fix that PDF for you guys in just a minute. This is three and five eighths by seven and three fourths. Pumpkin pie, we're gonna score the long side at two and a half, three and an eighth, five and a half, and six and an eight. Turn it and score it at five eighths and three. Okay, now grab your bone folder. Uh, good, Brandy, I'm glad you like them. I am glad that you like them. It's a pretty easy box too, I think. You could, these. this would be a good box if you needed to make like, you know, a bunch. All right, so we've burnished all the lines. Grab your scissors. I want my little scissors, and all I'm seeing are my large scissors. Let's see, over here we have some. Okay, on the long side, you can see you've got a smaller section over here, okay? That's gonna be the flap that folds over. So we're gonna cut these squares, this square here on the left side. I'm also just gonna cut the corners off so that it's narrower. Then I'm gonna come over here. I'm not gonna cut this line, okay? Just don't do that yet. It'll work if you do, but it works better if you do it this way. I'm gonna cut this rectangle off, okay? And then instead of cutting up here, I'm gonna cut this way. That way, that's this little flap and it'll be here. If you cut it the other way, it'll be connected to this, which would work fine, but I just think it's better if you put it here. Uh-oh, I'm frozen. I hope you guys can still see me because my iPad is frozen. All right, so we've cut there. Now we're gonna do the same thing over here. Cut that off, cut in from here. Then I'm gonna turn it and cut this and this. Let me see, okay, you guys, okay, good. I'm frozen, but I can still see your comments. Let's see, maybe if I re reopen it, let me just see. Oh, well, I'll just leave it. Okay, because we're almost done. All right, so in case you're making it and you wanna freeze the, the video so you can see exactly how to trim your paper, there you go, all right. Now I'm gonna take these two little guys, the center ones. I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of my Stamp and Seal Plus there. I'm gonna fold them up into the sides on the right. Then I'm gonna put adhesive here. Oh, come on. And I'm gonna fold that over like that. All right, there we go. So then those fold in like that, and this, hmm, something's off, something's not matching up. Why is it doing that? It didn't do that today. Hold, please. Let's see, did I do my score lines off? What did I do? Did I fold it up too high? No, they match. I think I just, okay, there we go. I just didn't attach them. Well, that, hmm. No, that works, okay. Come on, don't fail me now. There we go, okay, yeah, it works. Okay, I was gonna say, I made this earlier and it totally worked. All right, so then there's your box, folds in, folds like that. So you can put in your pumpkin chocolates down here. Hmm, the measurements seem a little bit like a hair's off on here. I'm gonna check this, but I think it's right. It looks a little off. Don't worry, I'll check it and I'll fix the PDF if those measurements were wrong. Now, <clears throat> here's a piece of uh, pattern paper that I forgot to put on here. This is the paper, somebody tell me, this is the paper that is, I realized earlier that I did not put it on here. It's the fall paper, what's it called? Gilded Autumn, is that what it's called? Let's just double check, Gilded Autumn. Hey look, I remember the name, Gilded Autumn. Now, all right, let's take those out. I'm gonna take some adhesive and I'm going to put 
put that on here. And actually you can do this before or after the next step. In the other video I did it after. Trim it down so that it's exactly the same size. Come on, scissors. Then take your quarter rounder and round. See how cute, so cute. All right, I'm gonna put these in here so that I don't eat them. There we go. Now, grab a piece of early espresso that is one and a fourth by about seven and a half. Would you like that about? Now I'm gonna wrap it around and pinch, pinch, pinch. Pinch, pinch, pinch. Here. I'm still frozen on my screen. I wonder why. And there we go. All right, so there's that. Now let's make a little tag. I am going to stamp those pumpkins in Memento Black. The same pumpkins we used just a little while ago. It's really bugging me. I want to make that permission required. Okay, Facebook needs permission. For what? Let's see, let's try it again. I wanna make sure, okay, good, I'm still there. Weird, that was weird. All right, now I'm gonna take my light pumpkin pie, stamp and blend. I'm going to color them all in. When I usually use Stampin' Blends, I say, you know, only work in a small section at a time. But this is a pretty small section altogether. Now I'm going to take my dark pumpkin pie, add dark to those lines and at the bottom. Okay. Go back. Lisa, you know it's funny. You're talking about the chocolates, right? She says, if you have an odd number, might as well eat them and just go get more. Yeah. Um, don't think that didn't cross my mind today, this morning. Don't think I didn't consider running out to get another bag. I did. But you know what? I'll just eat that bag, too. And that can only happen once. We can't let that happen more than once. All right, now... And I didn't eat them all in one sitting. It was like one or two a day. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Something like that. Okay, now these pumpkins on my original card, I mean my original project, I just cut the pumpkins out like this. But then today when I was making my video, I thought, no, let's do this. Let's cut them out. They have their own die. And let's pop them up with a dimensional because... Dimensionals are always fun. Put that frame there and carefully go through. Thanks, Missy. I appreciate that. This is our last project. We're almost there. We've got that. We've got our pumpkins. Put the dies back, Erica, don't lose the dies. Got that, and it's very vanilla. I think I, did I say that? It's very vanilla. I originally did it Whisper White and then realized the paper that I was using, this paper, is very vanilla. So you wanna make your tag in very vanilla also so that it'll coordinate with a DSP. Okay, now let's put that frame right there. Let's hold it for a few seconds. Vicki, this set is called Fireside Trimmings. It is in the holiday catalog, officially known as the December to, no, no, I can never say it right. Officially known as the August, this dimensional is too big, the August to December 2020 mini catalog. Thanks, Jean, I appreciate that. I really like this, this week's projects. They're fun. Anything that involves a pumpkin. All right, let's put this on here on our belly band. Put that there and we haven't used a bow yet. I can't let you guys go without a bow. 
bumblebee gingham ribbon. We don't have any pumpkin pie currant ribbon. We do have early espresso, but I thought this ribbon looked really cute with a pumpkin pie and the early espresso. So, and I love this ribbon. So we're gonna use it as much as we can. A glue dot and ta-da, done. This is a fun project. This is an easy one too. If you wanna make some treats. I did not put a sentiment on it. Um, it's small and I really, I didn't wanna take up any more space. So I think it was okay without a dimensional. You can see that's the one that's flat. I didn't pop those pumpkins up, but this one is popped up. So if you're making a bunch, you might wanna skip that step and just do that and that would be okay. All right, so let's look. We've done the pumpkin box. We've done that full mantle, full fireplace, and a fancy fold Christmas card. And coming on Monday, I will post the picture of that other project, that case from the catalog, so you guys can see it. Don't forget, if you'd like these make and takes mailed to you for free next week, here's the host code. Any order over $35 by Monday at midnight will receive these as a make and take kit. You'll need the stamps and dies, ink and adhesive. Um, the PDF is over at pinkbuckaroo.com. It's free. It's yours. Do whatever you want with it. I think maybe the link's broken. I will go check on it as soon as I get off of here and it'll be there for you. Don't forget the Halloween class, the autumn goodness PDF, the playing with patterns PDF and the starter kit special. You guys have a great weekend and I will be back next week. I've already designed next week's projects. I'm not going to tell you what it is. It's going to be a surprise. All right, you guys have a great one. Thank you. Bye-bye.